Hello and welcome to the seventh video in the introduction to our workshop series accompanying videos. Um, this is videos that goes along with the workshops that you put from the workshops from the introduction to our workshop series run by Karen Mumford, Conference Statistics Unit. Um, I've talked about in previous videos what the Statistics Unit can offer you and also provided contact details before, but there we are again. Um, in this video, the data set we're going to need is this severe condition data.csv data set. So hopefully you've downloaded that data set, if you want to follow along that is. If you want to follow along, hopefully you've saved that data set and know the location where you saved it and have that um, pathway to that folder where you've saved it ready to go so you can read that your working directory. Um, we're still talking about data preparation and handling. We're getting to the end of that because today we're talking about exporting and saving. We're just going to touch on this very briefly to get just the base concepts out. So we've talked in previous videos about getting data into R, um, exporting it from, importing it from different file types. And today we're just going to save a couple of files. Um, we've also made plots in R before, just basic plots, and we'll show today how to just save them into an external file for sharing and things like that. So exporting data, similar to the read.blank functions we've looked at before, there are write.blank functions we can use to export data. So previously we've looked at the read table and read.csv functions. There's also the write.table and the write.csv functions. Of course, there are many functions you can use to create external data sets, and many of them come from other packages. So for example, we'll talk about the packages foreign and haven, um, the special types of data set, um, data of, um, files like SPSS or Stata files, and there are many other packages that will help you save Excel files as well. But today we're just gonna do some real, real basic ones. Um, so if you wanna follow along, I've used read.csv to call in the severe condition data set.csv file and call it SC data. Um, so if you want to follow along, you can do that. SC data is just a really simple data frame, a variable for month, a variable for total number of cases, and a variable for number of severe cases of some fiction, some condition. Um, so a very basic data set. And so we want to look at how we could we could save this data set as different types of files. So to begin with, we could save it as a .txt file, and we can use write table for that. So, sorry, write dot table. So write dot table and then brackets. I've named all my arguments here, but you don't necessarily have to do that. So I've got the object that I want to save. So this object is the data set that I want to save. I've then got the file argument, which is going to be the file name of my resulting file. Um, so this will be saved to where my working directory is. So if I've set my working directory to be where I've called in severe condition data from, um, any files I export will go to that exact same location. But the file name, including the extension, is contained within the quotation marks. I've then got some other arguments. I've got sep, because it's a text file, I can say how I want to separate the columns of data. So the backwards, the backslash t is for tab separation. I've got row names equals false. So I don't have these numbers here on the, on the left-hand side of the data set, which are technically row names. So they're not printed to the text file. And I've got column names equals true so that the variable names are written to the file. And once I put all that in there, just control enter on that line of code. And it writes that, um, it creates that file for me. It doesn't give me any text saying, yes, it's been created. If warnings pop up, it means it may not have been created. So it's always good to go and check um, that your file that you've just exported is there. Um, start as you may have incorrectly done this on working directly earlier, so it's always good to check that everything's just worked correctly. And there's no issues with how you've saved it. Because for example, um, say now that I've cha I'll change a few inputs here. So say I actually wanted the row names there, or say I wanted there to be no quotation marks around character values, I could change those things and then save it as a different file name as well. So in this one here, I've got my second export file. Um, if you use the same file name for different things, it will just save over the existing file name. 
um, I will just automatically do that. So that's one thing to be careful for. Um, I can also save it as a CSV. So there's the write CSV function. And these are essentially, essentially the main things you need whenever you're writing something is you just need the object that has the data set in it and the file name, including the extension. So again, that function there, we'll just write the, the file again, exactly the same file because it's a CSV, it'll just be under a different name. But that's how simple it is to save the data set. If you want a specific format and I don't, and one of their functions that's been listed in the booklet or in the workshops doesn't give you that format, you can just Google to find the function that will save your data set to a specific format. But stuff like CSVs, Excel, um, text files are probably your most common and versatile ways to save data. Um, one cool thing to note is that you, with the write.table function, you can append data to a existing external file. So here I've got a C data again, and I've got the same file name as before, that severity data, my first export file name.txt. Um, and if I changed one of the arguments with append to true instead of its default false, when I run this line of code, it will just add um, the data in SC data to the bottom of the existing file there rather than overriding it. Again, you may never find a use for that. I just think it's something cool. Um, and you may find it useful if you're running code, say each month and you want to keep building on a file. Um, I know I'm going through this quickly. Again, this is just to go over some of the concepts. Um, again, feel free to pause and go back again. Um, you don't have to follow along. Um, it's just another way to show you some of the really basic concepts um, from the uh, workshops. Okay. So saving a figure, um, again, like I said earlier, we'll spend a bit more time on making really high quality figures in a later video. Um, a lot of the ones I'm about to show you are just ways of making a, a virtual output of an, of an external file of um, plots of stuff you may have created. Um, and so there are different specific functions to make specific figure formats. So you might want to create a PDF and so the way to do that in R is you can create and open a PDF. You can just create a blank PDF using the PDF function. And all you need for that is just the name of the PDF you want to create. Um, so in quotation marks with the .pdf extension, um, that PDF function will create a blank PDF. Anything, any plots you then create will go into that PDF and then the dev off function will close that PDF for you. Um, the dev off is for device off, so it's basically closing some external device that's being written to. So it closes that PDF and saves everything in it. Um, and the exact same thing can be done with other functions um, for different other, for other file formats, um, like JPEG or PNG. Um, you can just create a blank JPEG or PNG with those types of functions, add some plots to it, and then close them down. And you can always change the size of those JPEGs or other um, inputs as well. So let's jump across back to R. So here I'm going to make a blank PDF called example PDF output. I have to include the extension.pdf there. So I run that line of code and it will have created a blank PDF in my folder. I then got this plot here, which is just a really basic plot of month in total. And because my PD I've opened a PDF, that plot isn't going to go to my plot window. My plot window over here is blank. That plot is instead going to that PDF. And then I'm going to run device off. And it's telling me that nothing's open. I've closed everything off. And I can I'll look briefly at that PDF that I created. And yeah, it's just a very basic plot. I'm not trying to show anything too impressive here, but this is a PDF that was blank that I've now made and have a plot saved in it. So if I wanted to make a quick plot, I was just inspecting some data and I wanted to quickly send it to someone to see what they thought of some data, make a quick PDF or something else, save it, send it off. 
Um, we're not making high quality plots right now. I'm just showing some basic concepts you can use. Um, yeah, and same similar thing for JPEG. So JPEG will create a blank um, JPEG file. And there are all sorts of things I can do to make the width to, to suck, define what the width and height of the JPEG is going to be, with width and height argument. There's the units argument, which will describe in what units my input to width and height were. So my, ten, my width is 10 and my height is 8. And then units equals I N in quotation marks means those numbers are in inches. And there's all sorts of other um, arguments I can use to define the resolution and properties and other stuff for the JPEG. Um, so feel free to look into the documentation of that if you want to. But essentially it works very similar where the JPEG function will create a blank JPEG with that file name um, and then make the exact same basic plot. And then using DevOff, I will close that um, file off and it'll be saved. And then I'll show you what that looks like. Again, it's just a very basic plot, but now as a JPEG. So quick way to save a visual interpretation of data, send it to a colleague or to save for your inspection later on. And then in other videos, we'll focus on how to make really high quality um, and visually appealing figures. Okay. That's what I was after. Here we go. Cool. Um, and the other thing we'll look at is just how to save R objects as specific R files. So we can save R specific objects in workspaces and then call them into R later on without having to save them as an as a CSV file or something else like that. So we could save a single object, for example, a data frame or even uh, a model output or some other um, model statistics using the function save RDS. And if we can then read it back into an R session later on with the function read RDS. So this is a way of having all that information as R would keep it um, without having to turn it into some other external file and then read it back into R later on. Um, we could save multiple objects just with the function save. So we could have multiple data frames or objects, call that an R object, or save that as an, a, a file, and then load that back into R with the load function. Or we could save an entire workspace and then read that back in with um, a function as well. So we'll jump back. So uh, now, okay. So I've got an object in my environment called my data frame. It's a very simple, um, very, very simple data frame. As you know, sex and age. I think we may have seen this before in other, other videos by Amy. So I can use the function save RDS to save this. Um, so this my data frame here is the object that I want to save. It's just a single object. After that, I give it a file name. So the file name is in quotation marks and it has the extension RDS. So I'm just going to call it my data frame as well. Um, so I can save that. It's that file has been saved. If I use read RDS and say what file I want to read in, so read RDS. And then within quotation marks is the file name, including the extension. It will read in that object exactly as it was when I saved it. So this way you're not get, allowing your data to be converted to another file format. It's going to stay exactly as an R object would. Of course, like with other read functions, I'm just reading it in doesn't necessarily save it as an object. So for this one, I would have to um, assign it to an object, for example, my data frame read in. And now I have a my data frame read in um, object as well. So that's how you can save a single um, R object without having to convert it to some other file format first. 
we can save multiple um, objects at once as well. And that can be done with the save function. So we can save, for example, I've got a couple of different objects here. I've got my data frame, got my list, got my array. All of these are different objects that we've seen before in previous videos. Um, so you don't have to follow this along. I'm just sh um, more showing the concept here. You can always try with your own objects or own data you have saved in your R session. But with the save function, I can list um, all the different objects in my environment that I want to save, have them separated by commas. So I've got my data frame, comma, my list, comma, my array, etc. And then I have the file argument, which is what I want to save all these different things into the one object and what I want to work into the one file and what I want to, what I want to call that file. So let me start that again. I want to save those three objects into the one file. And so this file argument is what I want to call that file. So I'm going to call that file my things. And it's going to have the extension dot R data with a capital R and capital D. So I can save that and that will create the object my things um, with extension dot R data. And that can be read back in to a session with the load function. I won't do that now. Um, because when you oh I will because when that's when you use load, you don't have to assign load, um, the output of load to an object. Um, load will bring in all those different objects and those objects will still have their names attached to them. So it's not really changed my environment because I already had all of those objects in there anyway, but you don't have to assign the output of load because each of the objects in there already have an object name because they retained their objectness, I guess you could say. Um, there is a way to save an entire workspace. So say you've done a bunch of work, but you need to say restart your computer or shut it down for a while, um, but you don't necessarily want to close your session. Not that um, SAR Studio will generally save your session anyway. It generally isn't one of the perks of having our Studio, but say you want to save your workspace exactly as it is with the objects and everything in it as it is right now, or even it's just a more practical way than just saving, listing all the objects if you know that you actually want to save all the objects in your workspace. Um, you can use the function save.image and that will save everything in your workspace or every, and everything in your environment. So all the objects and values you have there. So save.image is the function. What you need is to give it a file name. So I can go, this one here is all my workspace with underscores. It's also got the extension dot R data with capital R and capital D. Um, so I can say, run that line of code and it's saved that dot R data um, file. And to show that it's everything and then I can call it in, um, just a second. <coughs> um, to show that, I've saved everything, you can call it all back in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clear my entire environment. So this, I'm not sure if we've seen this before or not, but we can clear the environment either with this um, broom icon in your environment tab or with this line of code. So RM is the function that removes things from your environment and list is the argument for that. LS is a function that tells you everything that's in your environment. So if I say list equals ls, what I'm saying is that the list of things I want to remove from my environment is everything in the environment. So if I run that line of code, my environment is empty and I can call it all back in using load. So I'll load that dot r data file that I made with the save image and then it's all back there. So this can be a way if you want to definitely back up everything you have in your environment before you close our studio, um, or you might want to save a specific environment, um, clear everything, then work on some other stuff, then clear that and come back to this environment with everything as how you've saved it. Um, 
But yeah, that is how you can save our specific objects as well. Um, that's all for this video. Um, hopefully you've checked out some other videos and you can check out even more videos. Um, remember there are examples and activities in the book. And also the best thing to do is just, the best way to learn is to do the R. Um, so try saving your own files, try saving your own plots. Um, just experiment with uh, save RDS, that save and that save image file, um, just to get a feel for everything. Again, you don't have to use all these different functions and different things I'm showing you. Um, you might, your workflow and how you deal with things might be very different, but I'm just showing you some of the skills and options that are available to you. Um, but thank you very much for watching this video.